I feel like the balls was only like 15 feet away. That's gonna take like maybe three seconds to go and then you can just chuck Wilson back to the, the life raft and everything will be good. Cause the water's not even that, it's not even that choppy. I feel like he could have saved Wilson to be honest. Hey GQ, this is Caleb Dressel and this is The Breakdown. First up, sex education. Let's go! That portion is called the underwaters. So anytime you come off a wall or off the start, you're gonna go through the underwater phase. And then my sweet spot is somewhere around six to eight kicks. And then you'll transition from the underwaters into the breakout is what we call it. And that's where you go from the underwaters into the actual swimming portion. Here we go, Jackson, come on, man! He took about six kicks in a span of about three meters right there. So off the start to get me to 15 will be about six kicks. So not the most efficient undies I've seen. Here we go, Jackson. Come on, man. Let's go. Man, this is forever, Jackson. No, man. He dove in because there's a lot of bubbles. There's no way that was a push off. And then he only swam one lap, which is not a real race. That's a 25 meter pool or 25 yard. It's definitely not long course. The shortest race is going to be two laps. Get miles off, huh? And you're coming up out of the water straight into the stroke, man. You're losing all your technique. How many times have we got to go through this, Jackson? I've gotten lit up before, um, but I've never walked away from it wondering if I deserve to be getting lit up. It's all been within reason, and I, I'd rather be getting some type of feedback than no feedback at all. It means the coach cares about you. So in this situation, I thought, I thought this was a, a beautiful thing happening. He's just trying to help my guy out. You need to focus. I am focused. Maybe that is why the coach is very angry. Forget the breakout. If, if Jackson's getting distracted by the girl, then that's a bigger problem. I hate when people watch my practices. I've never heard of anyone sitting in the stands watching a practice. Maybe when I was in high school, you'd have a couple parents here or there, but especially not in college. It's it's just the coaches and then and then the team. He was also the only one at practice, I just realized. And that's never gonna happen. I don't think I've ever been the only one at practice. Certainly not high school. There's usually like 40 people there. Besides the just one lap and finish on the other end of the pool, I'm not gonna shred Jackson's technique. I thought he did the best he could, but they even talked about the breakout and then the strokes into the wall. But the only thing was he didn't really swim a real race. Next up, swimming for gold. <laughs> No coach uses a whistle. I think it's like a rule if you're a coach that you have to be able to do the, the finger whistle and certainly not just like blaring it in everyone's face. I think you have to be like able to do it like this to be considered a coach. Every coach I've ever worked with, they never use a whistle. It's always the like, I can't do it. I, I can't do it because I'm not a coach. This is not a technique that I would use in my practice. A lot of slipping of the catch, a lot of elbows dropping, and the hips are very low in the water. So basically the whole point of swimming is to get your hips as high up in the water as you can. You're gonna float better and you're gonna move through the water much quicker. The higher you are on top of the water, the faster you're gonna be. That's like the whole point of my career and existence in this sport is to try to figure out ways to keep my hips high up and move forward faster through the water, which they were um, not doing. The technique all in all is, is pretty bad. So when they're holding the, the board, it's basically just a glorified piece of foam that floats. So you can just use your legs. So it takes away using your arms and you only can kick to move yourself through the water. And then I saw them doing butterfly and I saw them doing freestyle. But the coach could have given them a set that was different for each swimmer. They could have had different um, main strokes and that's why they're doing different strokes in the same lane. All of the strokes are connected at some point. You can learn things from each part of the stroke. Just because you're training freestyle doesn't mean you can only get better at freestyle by just doing freestyle. So if I train butterfly, I think you could help my freestyle. If I train freestyle, I think you can help my butterfly. At the end of the day, you can do other strokes and learn from each of the stroke to implement that into different parts of each stroke. I thought the breathing pattern in fly was actually pretty good. I think he was going one up, one down, which means your head's in the water for one stroke and then you'll come up and breathe for one stroke. That's actually how I swim my hunter fly. I think it's the most efficient way to get oxygen and still be able to stay flat on the water and move forward. 
we actually have long fins and then we have short fins, which he was wearing short fins in the video. They're a bit heavier and they're harder to use, but you can get to top speed a lot, lot faster with the shorter fins. They don't flex as much as to where the long fins, there's a lot more bend in them. So they're better for like more aerobic sets. And like if you're going anything over a 200, that's not all out. I and mean, they're not as demanding on your legs. And then the kickboard, yeah, they're using a couple boards. And then the cap and goggles they were using were not the most high end cap and goggles. I've been wearing the same goggles since I was, I think, like 11, 11 years old, the speed sockets, Speedo speed sockets. That's just my goggle, that's what works for me, that's what I practice in, that's what I race in. And they look cool, these just don't look that good. And then the cap, I usually just wear a gator cap, um, usually something not with a full on design on the side of it, I like keeping it clean. <laughs> So it's actually uh, illegal if your legs come apart in butterfly. So if, if you're like, oh, like frick this, I'm just gonna start doing that. You're gonna get disqualified and your race isn't gonna count. Your legs and butterfly have to stay together. Your hands actually have to touch the wall at the same time as well. Whereas freestyle, actually the only thing you can get disqualified for in freestyle is if you grab onto the lane line and start pulling yourself down the pool or if you dive down below and push off the bottom. So freestyle, you can actually, there's no rules. That's why it's called freestyle but the most efficient way is what you see when people are swimming normal freestyle stroke. If I wanted to for freestyle, I could dive in and start swimming butterfly or breaststroke or backstroke and not get DQ'd, but you just can't touch the lane line or to touch the bottom of the pool and everything's good to go. Next up, Castaway. If I had been on an island without food for a couple years and my best friend just fell in the water, I'd probably have a a really hard time treading water. For sculling, it's not bad. Sculling, treading is it's the same things where you're kind of just windshield wiper in the arms out in front. There's different like type of skulls you can do in stationary kicking. You can either just do normal flutter kick, normal dolphin kick where you feet it together, or egg beater, which is what um, Tom Hanks is doing in this scene. So I, it's actually actually pretty good. There is a huge difference between swimming in a, in a pool and then swimming in the ocean. Even when I go to the beach and I'll, I'll hop in the water, it's a totally different feel. You don't have a controlled environment with nice salt water, nice chlorine, nice crystal clear water with glass on top. I even noticed the difference for, I've swam in relays to where the water will get super, super choppy and you'll dive in maybe behind after the first two legs go off and you can feel the chop hitting you throughout the whole race. You can throw off your whole rhythm. And that's just in a pool. This is certainly much different. I feel like the boat would have moved, right? That raft, there's no way the raft is made out of sticks. It would have moved. Dang it, that, this is mean. It's, I'm gonna feel bad after this scene. These, he was just stranded for so long, but I feel like even if he was stranded, he should have been able to pull the, the raft made out of sticks. Things are much, much lighter in the water. I feel like the ball was only like 15 feet away. That's gonna take like maybe three seconds to go and then you can just chuck Wilson back to the, the life raft and everything will be good. Cause the water's not even that, it's not even that choppy for the middle of the ocean. Like the raft isn't gonna go that far. I feel like he could have saved Wilson to be honest. Next up, pride. To the end and back. Lead the way. All right, on your mark, get set. How the guy's starting on the right is, is correct, but for the 70s, the guy on the left, that, that's way back in the day. Some people, it's called a trophy start. That's, that's way, way back. And they would start like that. And then people were like, oh, when, when I bend over and use my arms, it's much faster. And then nowadays it's developed into actually putting a foot back and our blocks have a wedge now that's adjustable and you can find what your number is, just like the track guys. Yo, man, what you doing, man? It's a race. That was probably the least efficient way to dive into the pool. The fastest part of swimming is when you're not in the water actually swimming, it's diving off the block. So you wanna carry your momentum from the block as much as you can into the actual swimming slow part of the race. They said to the end and back. So that would be, they're doing a 50 free right now. These are Americans, sounds like they have American accents. So this should be 
50 yards, not 50 meters. This is the shortest race that's offered in American swimming. Yo, man, what you doing, man? It's a race. Not really. Go, man. In practice, we're gonna be wearing what the guy on the right is wearing, the that yellow and blue suit. People just call it Speedo, Weenie Bitter, Banana Hammock, Brief, I think is what most people call it. In a race, we have something called a tech suit and it's what everyone calls the biker shorts. And it goes from, has to be below your belly button and then it's gotta be above the knee. A lot of them are water, waterproof, water resistant. And a lot of them have materials that are buoyant in the water to keep your hips up best they can. Now you gotta keep in mind that it's this much fabric that we're wearing, so it's not gonna make you a better swimmer. And that's certainly something I would not wear in practice because it's, it's super tight, it's uncomfortable. You just wanna be in something comfortable in practice. Go, man. Go, go. The dive was terrible. You see how much water is splashing up right here? This is what you don't want. You want as limited splash and as limited bubbles as you possibly can. He didn't get his hips high enough on the start, so that's why his feet are about to smack. You wanna visualize it as a hula hoop. You're diving into a hula hoop into the water and then carrying that momentum. <laughs> It's no surprise that he didn't do the correct turn either. I guess he he's probably new to swimming, it, it appears, is what they're setting up in this scene. So he didn't really do a turn. He just kind of touched the wall, turned around, caught his breath, and then flipped off. And then my other guy came into the wall and actually did a normal flip turn. So that was also very accurate. And then he didn't do any, any, not a single underwater on this on this scene. So for a 50 freestyle, I usually take seven kicks off of the wall that he's pushing off right now and he didn't take any, but I don't really think underwaters were as popular as they are now nowadays. I think that's why the sport's got, gotten so much faster is because people are still figuring out how the sport works, what's the fastest thing to do. And that's why I think we've just seen um, a, a very steep progression with the sport and people going faster times, harder training and better technique, I think is what it comes down to. <laughs> This gentleman was breathing every two the whole race, which means he's gonna be breathing every two strokes to his, it was actually to his right side, so I breathe to my left side. Every two strokes as well in 100 freestyle. This is only a 50 freestyle. At a high level, no one no one breathes in the 50, 50 yard free, 50 meter free. You're not taking a breath at all. Oh man, he got beat by Captain Payne. Fierce in that one. <laughs> the other swimmer that just won the race, I think he was breathing every three, which is just hold your breath. You gotta hold your breath if it's a 53. I wouldn't say he was fierce, it was actually so slow. They none of them were kicking, it looked like looked like a mile pace. I was actually fine. The technique actually looked pretty good, but they're swimming like really slow. So it's it's super easy to do good technique when you're swimming really slow. Next up, swimming upstream. Come on, Tiny, come on, come on, come on. So who's planning on coming second to me? We'll have to do a lot better than that with me, mate. You saw everyone walking out behind one another, single file and lining up in front of their lanes. They'll never do that for a prelim race. So I'm assuming this is a finals, a lot on the line right here. It's the last race. This is where everything matters. The prelims and the semifinals are done. This is just the finals. Thank you, Mark. They start off with backstroke. All the starts were terrible. The backstroke wedge wasn't invented yet either. Nowadays, backstrokers get like a little wedge to curl their toes over. So maybe everyone slipped off, off the start here and that, that's why it was bad. This is bad technique. He's looking back at the opposite end from, or the end from where he started from. Backstroke, you, you're supposed to be almost laying on top of the water because if you go like this and you put your head like that, your hips are gonna go straight down and then you're just gonna be absolutely plowing through the water. All of them, they have their heads straight up. They should be laying further back. This body position right here is pretty bad. That part right there where they're swimming, that actually looked pretty good. They're catching good water. I thought their hips were a little low. Before you show up for that meet, they'll give you a couple days where you can warm up, get used to the pool, because every pool to a certain extent is gonna be a little different. You can get your bearings as to where the markings are. Sometimes they have 15 meter markings on the bottom. Sometimes the lane line coloring is a little different for every pool. Um, sometimes the blocks are slightly, slightly different.
So you get used to everything leading up to the meet just to kind of tune things up and get your bearings straight before getting into race mode. Backstruck nowadays, a lot of it is underwater. It's super underwater dominant. You have guys going right up until 15 meters. You can't go past 15 meters. So I wish they showed that, but it's actually pretty good technique besides the head position and the hips sinking down. The catch was good. Really happy for Tiny winning that hunter back right there. Next up, Kingsman, the secret service. This is one of my worst nightmares. I used to not be able to fall asleep at night because I, I had a, a fear of, of drowning. I've been swimming my whole life. I mean, the water still can be very scary. It's one of the most you know dangerous forces in nature and to be able to form a relationship with the water through swimming, it's a beautiful thing. Oh! I wasn't timing it, but my guy's lung capacity must be gallons and gallons of air. He didn't even get like that good of a breath before he went down. I'm assuming you get waking up by your room flooding with water, your heart rate's probably gonna go up a little bit. And then he's talking, which is wasting air, and then he takes one breath and he just held his breath for I don't know how long, swimming around the room. No way. I've definitely gotten pressed for oxygen. I've come up, I mean, a little dizzy. It's part of the sport. You just wanna be focusing on your breathing the whole time and then get that last breath before you go and staying calm is huge. So he did look very calm the whole time, but uh, he wasn't that good at swimming from when he was just going to the door. It was a very labored and forced stroke and no no bubbles came out of his mouth whatsoever, which I, I thought was incredible. If you're you know panicking underwater, air is gonna be coming out of your mouth, which is not, you don't wanna be wasting oxygen like that. I mean, it's the same thing in, in practice when we do sets like underwater sets and stuff like that. You wanna contain as much air as you possibly can. There's definitely aspects of the race to where I'm, I'm not breathing. My last 15 meters of both my 100 fly and 100 free, I'm, I'm not gonna be taking a breath. And that's at the end of a race and it, it hurts, but I just, I feel like it's a faster part of the stroke. It's very hard to see underwater, especially without goggles. Everything's fuzzy. So for him to be able to find the door and then finagle his way all the way to the window without running into anything and knowing exactly where to go. Maybe he knew the room really, really well. I don't know, but I would have said a prayer and gone back to bed. Next up, just go with it. I don't know if the kid's acting or if he's like actually might be in, in trouble right here and they just decided to film the scene, but this is bad. You want to wean them into the water. You want to have them enjoy the water. I've seen kids as young as, I want to say he's like one or two years old already getting swim lessons. I mean, you can start very young. I grew up in Florida. You look left or right, there's either gonna be an alligator or a body of water. So my parents wanted to make sure that I was seeing the water as something that I can enjoy and not something to be scared of. I mean, I grew up boating, wakeboarding, swimming competitively, going to friends' lake houses, and the water was never considered a threat to me. Let's do this. Really? Okay, he's ready, he's ready to rock. Almost. What? No. Oh my, ladies and gentlemen, up come the floaties. I wore floaties when I didn't wear them. I did look something along these lines, but I was much, much younger. I did it! I did it! That's so funny. Actually, the first time I had a race, I wasn't even entered in the race. I just stepped up on the blocks, dove in, swam the other end of the pool, and I got out and did the same thing. I was like, oh, mom, dad, I won a medal. So I think that's my first uh, my first in with swimming, and that's what got me my first my first feel to it. And I think after that, I just kind of stuck with it. So the more white water you have in a stroke, the more splashing going on, it's it's wasted energy because it means you're you're putting energy into the water that could be used to be driving yourself forward with the water rather than just directed at the water. So some of the best swimming that you see, it's gonna look almost as if the person's not even trying at all. And that, those are some of the best races I have is where I don't try to power through the water, I work with the water. We'll give him A for effort. And he was excited. That's the most important thing, he enjoyed his time. Thank you all for watching these clips with me and we will see you next time.